is located just off the shore of Kenya in the Indian Ocean. The island was first inhabited by Arab traders in the 13th century and was a major center of global trade for hundreds of years. We arrived just in time for the call to prayer. Today, Lamu is home to a Muslim-majority Swahili community and the oldest and best preserved Swahili settlement in East Africa. Its culture, people, and architecture reflect its diverse past and influences. I had no idea that a place like Very this nice. existed in Kenya, and I'm here to learn more about the culture and history of Lamu and to experience the lifestyle of the local people. Lamu Old Town is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The streets are a labyrinth of narrow pedestrian alleys, a legacy of Arab urban development, and there are no cars in sight. You can either walk or catch a ride on a donkey. This is Lamu Old Town, the oldest continuous Swahili settlement in East Africa, and it was founded in the 12th century. And today it is majority Muslim and it's very beautiful. Lamu is a major port city on the East African coast, so it's been shaped by different influences throughout the century. So walking around, you'll see signs of Swahili, European, Indian, and Middle Eastern influences. This is the main produce market in Lamu Old Town and here's where locals shop for their produce and you can see the core components of Swahili cuisine and I love visiting local markets everywhere we go because you really get to see like the way of life in the place. <laughs> Lamu Old Town has stunningly beautiful architecture, influenced by a unique of styles brought by those who settled here or passed through. Houses are constructed with coral limestone and mangrove timber, and they're built very close to each other. On Lamu Island, you see a lot of these coral walls, and a lot of architecture is built with coral stone. And you can really see the outlines and shapes. It's really interesting. And of course, you can't build with coral anymore, but it's something that's just really distinctive about all of the architecture here. There's a lot of really narrow alleys in Lamu, and it feels very much like you've stepped back in time or like you're in a movie set or something like this. Walking around Lamu's back streets, I loved looking at the elaborate wooden doors. To an untrained eye, all the doors look similar. But if you look closely, the decorative wooden carvings tell the story of the people and cultures who left a mark on the island. All the doors you see with this one, we call fingers, see? Oh, the, the finger. finger can fit. Okay, and that's, that's Swahili too. That's Swahili doors. So this door is Swahili because of the finger. Because of the fingers and the flowers. The flower carving. How they're carving, yeah. Uh, they're beautiful. Yeah. major architectural influences here are Portuguese, Arabic, and Swahili. And you can tell the differences by the different carvings in the door. So this one specifically is an Arabic one, but we've also seen Portuguese influence ones as well as Swahili ones. This right here, this is a Portuguese door. And then these carvings here are Indian inspired. It's really quite amazing. This mosque is 225 years old and I can't go inside because it's only for men but it's absolutely stunning on the interior. 
Jumbo. Dottie. Dottie. <laughs> this is where the local people live, and it's all Swahili, and we're just walking around taking it all in. Hello. Jumbo. Being in Lamu Old Town and the surrounding neighborhoods feels like stepping back in time. But there are some unexpected surprises that await if you know where to look. And just like that, in the middle of Old Town, we are in a very modern, hip coffee shop. It's quite beautiful in here. All our coffees are women products because yeah. uh, they do a lot of uh, work at the farm. So we try supporting them by getting their coffee and we roast it here and it's very good coffee. And this coffee shop is woman owned as well. Mm, the coffee is really good. There's our vessel for the day. <laughs> it's going to be a good one. If you get tired of donkey rides, can try a dhow. Dhows are the largest traditional boats of the Indian Ocean, the preferred vessel for transportation, trade, and fishing. It was a dhow that transported a giraffe to the Chinese emperor's court in 1414. Today, they are used for tourism and a really fun thing to do while in Lamu. We're with our crew. We got Salem, we got Muhammad, and the one and only Calamari right here. Come on. Happy family, happy day. We got a little bit of lunch going, we got some fresh fish, some vegetables, we got the charcoal barbecue set up right on the boat. It's looking good. So when you massage it, you get more milk. Yeah. Damn, that looks good. Thank you so much. Uh, today we're gonna have uh, coconut uh, rice and coconut vegetable, and we're gonna have a uh, fish of the day. We have a uh, wet snapper and coral fish and grouper. That's exciting. Is yeah. it Swahili food? Yeah, that is a Swahili food, and mostly cooked in a fisherman style. You know, we always love when we make fish. Mm. That is so delicious. Wow. Basically like a curried vegetable stew. It's so good. Yum. Charcoal grilled fish with Lamu seasoning. How is it? Mm. So juicy and delicious. Extremely delicious. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Asante. It was a bit of a strange day after lunch. Because of the low tide, the journey to see Omani ruins, which usually takes under one hour, took five hours. We haven't made too much progress yet because the tide is low, but we're surrounded by very pretty mangrove trees and we're not bored. <laughs> But we saw some beautiful views during the day and an absolutely stunning sunset. So all was well. Shella is located three kilometers south of Lamu Old Town. It has a similar vibe, though there's more upscale hotels and restaurants lining its beautiful beaches. 
We're in Shella. It's a slightly more upscale part of Lamu where a lot of tourists come to stay. And we're here, we're gonna walk around and then have a really nice meal for dinner. Our fourth time around the African corner. <laughs> At Paponi Restaurant, it definitely does not feel like you've stepped back in time. In fact, it feels like you've landed somewhere posh and modern. It's giving Tulum Beach Club. We're at a restaurant called Paponi right now, and it's a world away from Old Town Lamu. It's very posh, swanky, dim lighting right by the sea, and it feels a lot like the places that we've been to in Tulum, Mexico. And we've gotten an assortment of really fresh seafood and the menu is kind of fusion. So we got a smoked sailfish and we have a tuna tartare and we got a cashew butter hummus. Mm. Mm. Cheers, Elliot. Lamu has spectacular natural beauty, unique architecture, and a rich history. It's fascinating to see how the island has been shaped by the role it played in global trade and the different cultures that pass through. And this heritage is so well preserved and accessible. Lamu is another wonderful example of why Kenya is full of surprises.